That is such a yucky place. Oh, yes, I know, but we've got a job to do. Someone's got to keep the eagles and vultures away from the lambs. Anyway, who's the guy in charge of all the Israelites out here in the wilderness? His name is Moses, and he's been oh. called by his creator to go into the mountains and receive the commandments on stone tablets. What? Boy, I go to the chemist for tablets. Has he been <laughs> sick? No, no, no. The commandments are written on the tablets. Oh, well, chemists usually write the instructions on the bottle, not the tablets. Uh, listen, will you? These aren't normal tablets. They're really big. So oh. big that Moses probably had one in each hand. <laughs> Did his mum make him take them both at once? <laughs> oh, look. You've got it all wrong. These were two pieces of stone, and Moses wrote down the commandments that God had given him. Well, what are the commandments anyway? Well, they're rules. Huh. Do you know what the ru a rule is? Yeah, sure. A rule is about 30 centimetres long. No, no, that's a ruler. Oh, well, I thought a ruler was a king. Uh, yes, well, that's right, but it's wrong. Well, make up your mind. What exactly do you mean, Dad? Oh, look, a rule is something made up by someone to be a guide in life huh. so they can tell the difference between right and wrong. Well, I get it. Like, wash your hands before you eat. Yeah, that's it. Well, who made the rules for the humans? Uh, well, uh, who made the rules for scarecrows? The guy that made the scarecrows. Right. And the one who made the rules for humans is their creator. God. Well, what kind of rules? Well, uh, he told them not to worship false gods or idols, hmm. not to use his name in swearing, to worship him, uh, also to obey your parents, hmm. don't murder, keep faithful to your wife, uh, don't steal or lie, and don't be greedy. Wow, that's a lot of rules. <sighs> I'm glad there's only ten. Oh, well, there are lots more, really. Oh, how do they remember them all? Uh, well, later their creator will write them all down in a special book. Then all they will have to do is read the book. Ha! Well, that's simple, isn't it? Oh, yes, as long as they remember to read the book and, most importantly, do what it says. Right. Hey, there's my auntie. Hey, hey, what's she doing? You know... She's the best cook in the whole wide world. Oh, you're joking. No, the only problem is she only lets me have one biscuit at a time. Oh, what do you mean? Well, when we go and visit, yeah? she always says, only one biscuit and go out and play. Oh, come on. Those biscuits can't be that good. You haven't tasted her cooking. Oh, my mum and dad are going to her place tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, boy, I'd love to get one of those biscuits. Hey... Let's sneak up and get one. Oh, I, I, I don't think I can reach. Hang on, I'll get up. Oh. Hope she doesn't see us. No, I hope not. Uh, can you reach it? Yeah, I've got it. I've got, got it. On you. Oh, uh, good on you. I'll get it down. Shh, come on. Shh, quick. Yeah. Let's oh, get one. Let's get stuck oh, in there. Oh, that takes good. i better put the tin back up before she sees it. Oh, my one's delicious. Yeah. Be quiet, won't you? Hey, don't eat them all. I want some. Oh, I have no. And I made these special biscuits, you know, and they just disappeared on me. I don't know oh, what happened. Oh, I feel sick. Oh. oh, you poor boy. I'm so sorry you don't feel so well and can't enjoy the dessert and special three-decker chocolate cake. I cooked it just for you for your supper. Oh, oh well, that's OK. But I feel real sick in the stomach. What a shame. You know how you always complain that you only get one cake all the time. Yeah. Well, today I cooked a special batch of biscuits just for you to take home to eat this coming week. Oh. But someone stole them all. Uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but uh. you've missed out tonight, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> in more ways than you know, Auntie. Oh, I'll have to go oh, and use your bathroom, right. Auntie. OK, dear, uh, off you go. Hey, Cheryl, mm. my friend's got a budgerigar in a cage and I think it's cruel to keep birds in a cage. 
do you? Well, it's not really tiny if you think about it. You see, the budgie wouldn't survive in the wild, and so it's really kind to keep them in a cage. Yeah, but I still don't like it. Fancy spending all your life behind bars. Well, those bars also protect the bird from dangers outside. Well, what do you mean? Well, cats and other animals like to eat birds, and the cage keeps them from them. Yeah, but the bird mustn't like it. Well, he loves it when the cat's around. <laughs> Tiny, you're just like some people, really. Well, what do you mean? Well, some people think God's laws are a lot of rules that keep them in a cage. Yeah, I know. You can't do this and you can't do that. That's right. But God's rules are to stop us doing things that will harm ourselves and other people. You know, they actually protect us. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's because God made us. See, us humans have to follow our Maker's instructions. Otherwise, what will happen? Well, otherwise we could do great harm to ourselves. That's why God wants us to follow what he tells us. You but like what? Well, is stealing good? Um, no. Is murder good? Um, no. Is swearing good? Uh, no. Well, you see, God knows best, doesn't he? Yeah, seems like he sure does. Crenshaw, I am not liking the w angry words you are using. Well, when I get angry, I call people names. Especially when they call me fish head. Ah, yeah. I see. So, what did you call friend? Uh, Granddad, I'd rather not say. Always remember, Crenshaw, the old book says, he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from great trouble. Huh. Let me ask you a question. Big sailboat, what is most important part? Ah, huh, the sail. Ah, uh, not so. Well, uh, the mast? Ah, uh, not so. Try again. Oh, Grandfather, I don't want to answer all these questions. Can I go and play? When you know the answer, you can go. Now listen carefully. The smallest part of boat guides it in great winds and high seas. Oh, I know. That's the rudder. Correct. Now, little rudder guides great big ship. Uh-huh. And a small piece of wood called a match, it can set a forest alight. What's all this got to do with me telling that bully what I thought of him? Good question. The tongue is like a rudder and small but able to do great things. The match is small but able to do great damage. So the tongue might be small but it is able to hurt oh, many people. Tell me, can salt water and fresh water oh. come out of same tap? Oh no, of course not, Grindad. Correct. Unlike the tongue, one minute it sings nice songs, next minute it uses swear words. Oh. One minute it says I love, next time I hate. Always remember, grandson, he who can control the tongue can control the whole body. Okay, Tony, we're going to do a magic trick today. I want you to look through there and see if you can see anything. Can you see anything? Hello? No, no, just have a look. Can you see anything at all? Nothing at all. Okay, let's put it there. Now, I want you to tell me what colours these blocks are. We'll just put that across there. What colour is that one? Yellow. Okay, what colour is this one? Uh, red. And what colour is the top one? Green. Okay, now we've got some little uh, letters on there and it spells the word sin. All the bad things you do. <clears throat> yes, all the bad things you do. And in the book of Isaiah, it says, though our sins are like scarlet, this colour, they shall be as white as snow when God forgives us. Now, we're going to try and get rid of that uh, block in the middle. How are you going to do that? Haha, that's a secret. You watch this very carefully. Uh, make sure again there's nothing in there. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. <clears throat> okay. And we're going to put that down there. We'll put it over that one. And we'll put it over that one. And I'm going to click my fingers. One, two, three. And it's gone. How do you know it's gone? Well, do you want me to lift the lid off? Okay. Right, let's lift it off. Hey, it's gone. It's gone, all right. Well, you want to check that box. You want to check the box. OK, let's check the box again. I want you to look through there. Can you see anything at all? I can see nothing. Where's it gone? Well, actually, it's over here in my pocket. How did you do that? And if you look very carefully, all of the letters have gone. The letters that spelt the word sin. Well, I want to know how you did that. <clears throat> Doesn't matter how I did it. We've disappeared it. And I guess that's what uh, God's Word is all about and God's special rules, the Ten Commandments and all of the other rules that He's given us in His Word 
he spends a lot of time telling us how to get rid of all of the sin that uh, messes up our lives and, and makes a mess of them. Now, God's rules are best. Look, look. Okay. One of his new rules is that we should obey his commandments. And he says that the one who obeys my commandments is the one who loves me. So if we really love him, we obey him. <sighs> now, my dad, he asks, how come I get in so much trouble in a day? <laughs> I tell him I just get up early in the morning. <laughs> but seriously, those two over there, they were right. It's not a case of reading about God's rules, but doing it. 